Before we get started, Talk Music Talk has a newsletter, a weekly email featuring the current week's guests, plus what past guests are up to. Also, I'll tell you about shows I've attended and new music that I like. To sign up, head on over to TalkMusicTalk.com, click on the link, subscribe to newsletter, and you are all set. That's TalkMusicTalk.com. And now for today's episode. Hello there. Welcome to a new episode of Talk Music Talk with Boys. I am Boys. I am your podcasting host, and you are listening to a weekly music interview podcast where I have long form conversations with people every single week. Sometimes I double up because I have extra episodes to share with you. This is a podcast where I have conversations with people who are connected to music from different genres and different backgrounds, established and emerging performers, music journalists, music therapists. And on this episode, I had the pleasure of speaking to Mars Dixon from the band Idaho, co-vocalist, co-guitarist. They label themselves, according to their Bandcamp page, a queer punk band. They released an amazing album just a few months ago called Silver Haze. Mars is from Central Arkansas, based in Brooklyn. Had a great conversation with him. We talk about growing up in Arkansas, what that was like, bouncing around from Indiana to California before arriving in New York, getting involved in the music scenes in all those places. And he also talked about not always seeing people of color or women in bands and looking for that and how this lack was something that went into starting the band Inico, which was formed seven years ago. We talk about the creation of the band, the new album, of course, Silver Haze. And we also talk about themes in his music, shyness on stage, touring, what's that like? They just got off a five-week tour. And also, he is very open about being a trans man and how that is personally and also how that works in his music career. And after the conversation, two songs, two great songs, two of my favorite songs from Silver Haze, Spare Me and Sissy, which we talk about in the conversation. An amazing album. I didn't know which two songs to choose because there's so many great songs on there. But that's right after the conversation. But here it is, without further ado, my chat, my conversation with Mars Dixon from Inaco on Talk Music Talk. Enjoy. You guys, when you played uh, Silent Barn, that was your record release party after being on the road for like a month, solid month? Uh, it was like five weeks. Five weeks. How many yeah. shows did you do? Um, I don't remember the number, but most of the days of those five weeks, we played shows. We maybe had uh, two days off or something mm-hmm. and then missed one show because of a flat tire. Okay. Um. Yeah. And where'd you go? Where, was it East Coast, West Coast? Uh, it was a full U.S. tour, okay. and, and we played a show in Canada and one in Mexico. So. Mm-hmm. Is that the longest tour you guys done? Yeah, okay. as this band, yeah. Okay. And when you go into that tour, do you have any expectations or <laughs> <laughs> intentions um, going into it? Expectations? What do you think? I mean, I guess I expect to have fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I expect, you know, people to be at the shows, um, which isn't always the case sometimes. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I guess I'm. I mostly just expect to just like it, enjoy myself yeah. and and have fun, you know, with my friends, my my bandmates, mm-hmm. and also like see friends okay. in these different cities. So, where are the expectations met? For the most part, okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you finished the tour, and well, do you learn anything about yourself over the course of five weeks of a grueling tour? Um, well, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I learned that I can't be too uptight about germs uh-huh. and... Um, losing my things because mm-hmm. I, I lost a few things and I, I'm just not the kind of person who loses stuff. Like, yeah. I can count on one hand the times in my life I've ever lost my keys and okay. that's like two times. Um, I just like don't 
I don't lose stuff really. Yeah. And so, um, I don't know, just try to be okay with that happening. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and letting go of control. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was the first so, thing you said? Um, Losing stuff. Ger- oh, germs. germs. Okay. So the germs, is that like a <laughs> ongoing thing that if I ask people that know you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I, I kind of don't really tell people about what I think about germs. Yeah. Cause I feel like they'd think I was uh, crazy or something. Uh-huh. Um, so I just kind of keep quiet about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> so are you the person, like, they leave the bathroom and they're, like, pull their shirt sleeve down so they can open the door now? <laughs> um, Is that you? I'll, I'll use, like, <laughs> toilet tissue, toilet yeah. paper to touch, or, like, paper towel or something to touch the doorknob. Um, I don't know, just kind of, <laughs> I'm just, like, kind of grossed out. Okay, uh, uh, how long have you been like that? Um... Maybe for a, I, I don't know. Maybe I've just always been that way. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Which would seem unavoidable on a tour. To yeah. Avo- yeah, to avoid yeah. I mean, I bring hand sanitizer. Yeah. With me, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Playing in a uh, overly clean DIY space or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not. Yeah. And so okay, so you come back from the tour. Or are you like how? How do you like reacclimate yourself? From being away from home for so long? Um, usually, I don't think about setting aside a, a day of like not going back to work. Mm-hmm. So I, I usually come back from tour, and then the next day I'm back at work. Yeah. So I just like just go right back into my routine. Um, this time, I had a couple of days before going back to work. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just kind of spent it not talking to anyone, yeah, just yeah. Ho- holding up in my room with snacks and playing video games okay. <laughs> and just kind of having alone time. Yeah. That's, uh, that's like the main thing. Mm-hmm. Just like, just not really talking to people, yeah. hanging out with people for a few days. And, um, can you even think about music when you come back, like playing it? Or you just need a break um, from that also? Sometimes I'll come back feeling kind of inspired, so mm-hmm. I want to go straight to my guitar when I get back. And I did do that maybe not the first couple of days of being back, mm-hmm. but like within the next few days, yeah. I st- started working on a new song. Okay. Um, so yeah, I, I still can think about music and okay. want to play music and stuff, so... How does like going on tour for that period of time so concentrated? Like, can you see a change in your singing, your playing? Um, I did notice over time I was loosening up on stage mm-hmm. a little bit, and like, um, <laughs> not as much as I really want to. Yeah. Um, but I'm getting there. I think. But yeah, it, it just because we were playing every single night, mm-hmm. it was just kind of like muscle memory. Yeah, and I yeah. can like, in this way, sort of think about something else while still like staying on track with the song. Yeah. Um, not that I was like thinking of, of like something entirely separate from yeah. what I was doing, but. Um, like your to do list. Or yeah, something. I wasn't necessarily <laughs> thinking like stuff like that. Um,. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> or, or are you other stuff you're thinking on stage? Or are you thinking of stuff on stage? What did you learn? Um, or how do you improve? Can you can can you see an improvement? I I'm gonna yeah you, I'm gonna guess like I, getting more comfortable. Yeah, I was just feeling more comfortable okay. on stage. I was noticing. Now, how long have you been performing? Or how long have you been doing bands? Um, for a while, my first show was when I was 18. Mm-hmm. Um, my first two shows were in the same day. Okay. Actually. <laughs> uh, and I just turned 31. So I've, I've been performing been a for while. a while. Yeah. yeah. And when did you start uh, writing music? What was your first instrument? Was it guitar? Um, 
I guess it was actually sort of keyboard. I was playing okay. keyboard. I had a little Casio when I was a little kid. Um, but I, I didn't get lessons or anything. Yeah, I, yeah. I just kind of like tinkered around. And then I started playing trumpet in middle school and mm-hmm. did that for a few years. And I was, I was in marching band. And I didn't get started uh, playing guitar till maybe I was 13 or 14. Yeah. Um, and I also, I taught myself how to do that too. Okay. So. And with, uh, playing guitar, with, so when, did you start writing songs with that, the guitar? Um, when I first started playing guitar, I, I kind of was just learning other people's songs mm-hmm. for a while. Um, I don't quite remember at what point I started writing my own, uh, maybe a couple years in mm-hmm. of playing guitar. Um, maybe not even... Maybe it wasn't even that long. Because um, I was I wanted to start a band with my best friend, my yeah. childhood best friend, who was also learning guitar around the same time. Okay. Um, and I guess we were trying to write songs together, but we had really different styles mm-hmm. and, and stuff. Um, what was your style? Um, I was really into... Like kind of like finger picking kind of stuff. Okay. Like the first few songs I ever learned on guitar were Michelle Branch and Jewel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was also kind of I was like really into like learning like, um, just kind of like fo- folkier kind of stuff and like Mississippi John Hurt. I was really into for mm-hmm. a second, um, and. I yeah I I I want I always wanted to play guitar like that like just like finger picking yeah um but so how'd you go from finger picking to more punk <laughs> music and is anyone um, finger picking picking in punk um can you finger pick in punk <laughs> <laughs> I I guess maybe I've seen people do that sometimes uh-huh. or like kind of finger picking and like picking at the same time yeah. like. I've seen people do some weird stuff like that before, which okay. is really cool. Uh, finger tapping. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, but wait, what did you ask uh, me? What was your like introduction? Well, like, what music oh. were you... Like, how did you transition from the finger-picking stuff to more like a harder music? Um, I was always listening to harder music, okay. but I just Aren't didn't know how to it. play it, mm-hmm. really. Or maybe it wasn't initially... initially interested in playing it um but who were you listening yeah. to um i guess when i was like 13 or 14 i was listening to a lot of different things um like i i liked i really liked pop music mm-hmm. i really liked country um i i mean i was into like linkin park yeah. limp biscuit corn it's modern rock yeah, or whatever. Yeah. Um, and I I think maybe when I was like 16, 17, that's when I started learning about stuff that wasn't on the radio. Okay. And I was finding out about local bands and going to see, going to see them. Mm-hmm. And... Um, just, I mean, just because of like the internet, like I was becoming obsessed with finding bands with women in them yeah. and learning about bands that were playing near me mm-hmm. and just doing like so much research like every single day. Um, and yeah, I, just, I don't know. I'm just like really hungry for that. Yeah. Like I, I just wanted to know more and more bands, more bands, mm-hmm. especially the ones with women in them and just trying to figure out like what I really liked. Yeah. And, yeah. I don't what was know. it about the women led bands? Um, I don't know. I just like really wanted to see that cause it, it, you know, it wasn't a thing that you would normally see yeah, like, yeah. women in bands. And I, I don't know. Once I realized that was a thing that could happen, I was like, there has to be more, there has to be more. Mm-hmm. And so I was like constantly like, researching in and found out about like riot girl yeah. and um yeah just like becoming politicized okay. and 
just like hungry for more mm-hmm. and more and more. Like there has to be more than what I'm being given. You know, what's there's more to what's in front of me. Like there's got to be more like beyond that. Okay. And, so, and where was this? Is in Arkansas? This was in Arkansas. Okay. Yeah. And we're at in Arkansas. Uh, I I've grew never up, been. <laughs> I grew up in central Arkansas, okay. like 20 minutes from the capital, okay. Little Rock. So. And what was Arkansas like? It was challenging. <laughs> uh, um, it's, I mean, it's like, it's beautiful. Mm-hmm. It's the natural state. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, and then, yeah, there's like lakes and mountains and stuff. And I don't know. It just, I just always knew when I was a kid like, that I just didn't really belong there. Yeah, yeah. Um, like the town I grew up in, two towns away from that, they held like KKK rallies. Oh, really? Okay. And um, at one point I was living kind of like in the middle of nowhere, Arkansas, and I was probably the only black kid at this school. It was mm-hmm. like a really small school. Um and I definitely was getting bullied yeah. and getting called a bunch of names. Um, yeah, it, and it was it was like tough. And also, uh, I'm the only black person in my family. Mm-hmm. Um, Were you adopted? So, uh, well, um, I, so I don't know my biological father, mm-hmm. but I know my mom. And we... There, there's just like a whole bunch of us. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's eight of us, and so some of us just have different dads. Okay. And, um, so yeah, I just don't know my bio- biological father. Mm-hmm. Um, but my legal father is white, and that's the guy that I grew up with. Um, so yeah, it was. Hence the uh, mostly white school. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In mostly white um, Arkansas. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so like, I, I, yeah, I just like didn't really have anyone to talk to about like getting called these these names. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, it was, I don't know. <laughs> kind of tough. <laughs> was uh, well, wh- when did you find the local music scene? Um, probably when I was like fifteen. Okay, and does that help? Any uh, or like you seeing a different type of people? Yeah, I was, you know, I was seeing, like, people who kind of looked like how I wanted to look. Mm-hmm. And, like, they just looked really cool with yeah. their Converse and, like, Dickie, Dickies uh-huh. and, and, like, chain wallets or whatever. I never had a chain wallet, but I don't know. <laughs> uh, they just looked really cool and, like, I, I wanted to be like them or something. Mm-hmm. Did you have to sneak out to? No. Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> My mom didn't really have strict rules. Really, okay. So. See, I was a good kid, so I found that as long as you're good, in quotes, yeah. you can do whatever you want because no one... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> everyone trusts you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because I would, like, sneak out, like, on the weekends and stuff, and, like, nobody, I could, <laughs> nobody questioned where I was going, what I was doing. Yeah. yeah. So, right. uh, so you, the local music scene, and, like, when when do you leave Arkansas? I left when I w- just, had just turned 20. Mm-hmm. And then I, I moved to Bloomington, Indiana. Okay. And there's, there's, like, sort of a connection between... Uh, Little Rock in Bloomington, Indiana, yeah. just like, like, like uh, the music scene. They were at least at the time were kind of connected. Okay, um, and that's kind of how I ended up moving to Bloomington, and I was there for a couple of years mm-hmm. and playing music. I started off playing like solo, and I was doing that there for a little bit, and then uh, my acoustic guitar broke, and that's when I realized I should. It's time to go to electric. Yeah, and so yeah. that, Bloomington is when I started playing electric in a band. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Was the music scene better in Bloomington? Um, 
I don't know if it was better, but it was m- more, I guess, more what I was interested in. Because, mm-hmm. like, Little Rock was more, like, hardcore, yeah. metalcore, and just, like, yeah, just, like, harder, I guess. Mm-hmm. And in Bloomington, it was more, uh, there's definitely more, like, acoustic kind of stuff going on and, like, folk punk i i was never super into folk punk mm-hmm. but that i i was i guess more into folk punk than like hardcore okay. or something um is yeah. that what your uh, <laughs> solo stuff linked to when you first soloed or did um, performing live it it wasn't folk punk um it wasn't either of those words mm-hmm. it was it, i don't know it was just kind of like um, I don't really know how to describe yeah. it. I, I I was really into Mira also when I um was writing those songs. So just kind of like I don't even want to say singer songwriter. Yeah, it was just kind of like uh, just Mars. Just, yeah, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Just like really soft finger. Like yeah, picky stuff. I don't know. <laughs> and what was uh, the stuff like? That, I mean, uh, lyrically themes that you were singing about. Um, some of it was about being really, really shy. Mm-hmm. Um, some of it, uh, I, I remember writing a song about how I was really afraid of the ocean mm-hmm. and fish i have a fish phobia yeah um so it's kind of i write about stuff like that and like um i wrote a song about my sister she didn't like it mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um yeah a, a lot of songs were like kind of sad yeah like just just a little bit okay and was the the shyness was that hard for you to get up on stage Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I was my stage presence was just really awkward cuz I was so scared mm-hmm. and um just shy. I mean I'm st- I'm still a little shy now, yeah. but I I don't know. I kind of like part of me kind of cringes like thinking about like the time I hit my head on the microphone mm-hmm. cuz I was like, like I bent down to grab my water and like stood up really fast yeah. and just hit my head really hard on the microphone and yeah, just like really like stiff, rigid uh-huh. <laughs> movements and not saying anything in between songs or if I do, it, I'm basically whispering. Yeah, I, I guess even when I was singing the songs, I I wasn't like really singing them. I was kind of like almost like whispering them. Yeah. Um. And I, I mean, I guess there is a place for that, and like, that's like a style. Um, but it wasn't. I wasn't doing it for like a style. I was doing because I was re- <laughs> really scared. I don't know. <laughs> so, so how do you get yourself like you're painfully shy? Like, how do you like? What does it take to get yourself to even do that? Because so many people would never even like as much as they would want <laughs> to. They would never take that step of getting on stage and performing uh, your own stuff. Yeah, I I have a little routine that I do before getting on stage. I like to I like to stretch and just mm-hmm. kind of loosen up, um, stretch my whole body, stretch my fingers. Um, I do vocal warm ups. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll have a drink. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll at least have like a drink in me before we play. And so I kind of, yeah, just kind of do stuff like that yeah. before getting on stage. Does it make it any easier that you have three other people on stage with you? Yes, okay. for sure. <laughs> for sure. Okay. And, and that you're not carrying all the vocals by yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm sort of terrified of playing solo again. <laughs> but I, I am, I have been thinking about doing it again. Yeah. Um, but not, not like... Like I'm, I'm working on a sort of electronic thing, mm-hmm. um, but 
uh, that's still in the works. I, I, I haven't even, I don't, I definitely don't have enough songs to actually play out. Yeah. Yet. But and when, be interesting. Okay. <laughs> and from Bloomington, then where, where to next? Oh, then I moved to Oakland, California. Mm-hmm. And I lived there for a couple of years, um, and then I moved here. Okay. In Oakland, were you involved in the music scene there too? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And is you can you see the progression in what you're doing? Oh, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, even even just like my songwriting, I've, mm-hmm. I've it's changed in the topics, uh, the way I play play guitar. I mean, the way I sing has changed some too. Mm-hmm. But also that's because um, of starting hormone replacement therapy. Mm-hmm. So my voice has gone down a lot. It's, okay. it's a lot lower now. And <laughs> <laughs> that I, I had to sort of figure out how to use my voice again mm-hmm. once the testosterone lowered my, thickened up my vocal okay. cords. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, I've definitely, I can see like, the way my songwriting has yeah. changed over time. Was that a concern about your voice? The, yeah, yeah, I was I was pretty scared mm-hmm. um, about just not knowing what my voice was going to sound yeah. like. Um, but I don't know. I was more scared continuing to have a voice that I didn't want. Okay. So I was like, I'm just going to do this. I'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. I'll do the research, reach out to other people who, you know, started testosterone and they were a singer. And um, I I was taking vocal lessons for a minute too, uh, like singing lessons, mm-hmm. not speaking. Um, and that helped too. Yeah. So. And what age were you? How old were you when that you started taking replacement therapy? I that was four almost four years. Okay. Yeah, four years ago. Okay. And how do you get to the point to start taking them? Like, what's the journey of that? Taking testosterone? Yeah. Because um, that's going to be a little scary, right? Yeah. So you don't know exactly how yeah, you're going to react to it. Right, yeah. right. That That's the scary part. Like, I, I kind of feel like, uh, I kind of feel a little bit like a guinea pig or something. Uh-huh. Like, no one really knows for sure what's going to happen to their body. Um, I mean... All you can really do, I guess, is just, you know, read about other people's experiences mm-hmm. and look at their photos and, um, you know, I don't know, just like, just just do it. If, you, yeah. if it feels like <laughs> that's what you, you want, you know, like what's scarier you know, not really knowing what's going to happen mm-hmm. or knowing exactly what's going to happen. You're going to feel sad because you didn't start testosterone. Yeah, yeah. Um, but. So does along with that know, that's being. Kind of extreme. <laughs> <laughs> being, so I guess it's like it's a journey to be more of how you feel that you are on the inside. Is that? Yeah, okay. yeah. And you can stop or correct me if I say anything. Oh, no. That. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so the more, yeah, getting along the journey, the more how you feel inside to match with the uh, outside. Yeah. Like, right? or I wanted, like, both my inside and outside to match, like, what I, like, was envisioning. Like, even before I started pu- puberty, like, mm-hmm. I wanted to, like, look this certain way. Okay. And now, now I'm there, like... I like I wanted both my inside and outside to like match that. Or okay. <laughs> and does that give you like a confidence that you didn't have before when now like oh okay I look in the mirror and I look like I want to in my head. Yeah, yeah. Um I definitely feel so much better being on testosterone and, mm-hmm. and getting top surgery like there's not a single day that I like don't think about like how grateful I am that I was able to get top yeah, surgery. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm just like so happy that I was able to do that. Um, and I don't know. I, I, yeah, I like think about like my childhood self and mm-hmm. how, you know, puberty came and she, and like my childhood self was like, well, 
this doesn't seem right. Yeah. Like, this isn't. <laughs> like, it's getting worse. I yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, like, think about when my mom, like, when my boobs were growing. Yeah. And I would tell my mom how, like, my chest was really sore. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're, you're, like, tackling and, like, wrestling with those boys. Like, yeah. You keep doing that. They're never going to grow. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't want them to grow. So I'm going to keep ta- playing tackle football. I'm going to keep wrestling around with the boys <laughs> so they don't grow. I don't want them to grow. So, How'd that work out? <laughs> they, I mean, they, that didn't stop them. They still grew. Yeah. grew. Um, I mean, they were, they were a, a nice, like, average size. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't want them. Like, I wish I could have, like, donated, it, uh-huh. donated them to someone. They were, they were nice, you know. Just, I just not on me. Uh-huh. I don't want them. <laughs> <laughs> What's that charity like? Uh, Locks for Love or something? <laughs> oh yeah, Locks of Love. I actually yeah. donated my hair to Locks of Love. Oh really? Some okay. of it, yeah. There should be something similar for breasts. Yeah, like, I <laughs> wish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're sitting on a gold mine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no one steal this idea. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so what age do you realize? Like, okay, I don't feel like this isn't a match. Um, Even though I imagine as a kid, you may not have the vocabulary for that. Oh, yeah. I knew very early on that like, I wasn't exactly a girl, not mm-hmm. exactly a boy. Um, very, very early on. I remember like, I would put like a, a balled up sock in my yeah. underwear to uh, make it look like I had a bulge. <laughs> I would pee standing up um, like very, very young. Um like I, I don't know, I was probably like six or something. Yeah, yeah. Like I just knew, like I just wasn't a girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Were you able to share this with anyone? Is this all taking place I, like covertly? Yeah, I didn't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people people just assumed I was a tomboy because mm-hmm. I was bo- I was wearing boys' underwear yeah. and like uh, wearing hats and you know boys' clothes mm-hmm. and. For the Happy Meal, I'd always ask for the boys' toy or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, I was very much a tomboy, mm-hmm. but, it, you know, it was a little more than that. Yeah. And I guess I feel like a, our society allows, like, a tomboy that's okay, that's kind of cute, as opposed to, you know, a feminine boy, little boy. Oh, for sure, for sure. And then that, I, yeah, like, that's, it's so sad that, you know, like, femininity is seen as weak or you know uh, unwanted or whatever and and that that's the thing that changed for me too when i started testosterone Mm -hmm. i was able to embrace my femininity like you know i i don't know like i just like I was just able to shed like that, like hatred for femininity. Yeah, yeah. When once I started testosterone, mm-hmm. and just like wow, like that was really messed up. That I like, I don't know, like thought that I, I don't know, just like what you're just like taught about yeah. being feminine. Like I don't know, it just like wasn't okay. Yeah, which we're all kind of taught. Yeah. Subliminally, on purpose. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, from when you start taking the hormones, like, is it like an ongoing, or is there a point where like things just kind of like taper to how you want? Um, for me, it's ongoing. I know mm-hmm. some people will, I guess, like eventually stop if you know they feel like they feel good about like where they are. Okay. Um. But I feel like usually people will continue f- mm-hmm. for the rest of their life. Yeah. So. Now, what's it like? Th- there's a little thing called male privilege, right? Yeah. <laughs> what's it like to go from to, I guess, being able to enjoy male privilege? Like, was there a point um, where you realize, ooh, <laughs> this yeah. is different. This is kind of cool. Um, I feel really bad. Like, uh, like... I, and like sometimes I forget mm-hmm. that I get read as male. Yeah. Um, so if I see like groups of men, I'm just like I'm gonna get harassed. Like I'm gonna get like it's still like my body is like still very traumatized yeah. from 
all the cat calling and getting followed and mm-hmm. getting harassed and just like being hurt, yeah. physically hurt and like abused by men that like it, my body just like remembers and like tenses up mm-hmm. even though like, I know I feel like I'm wearing a mask or like a cloak or something. Okay. And, like, I, like or a double I agent. Can, like. <laughs> yeah. So I can, st- I can like walk by and usually not have anyone say anything to me. Um, but now I feel like I it it's like the other like so I'm not being read as male but now I feel like I can be read as like read as like a gay man mm-hmm. and I don't know that I think about like if I'm like walking if I'm like swishing my hips or something or like I, if I like look too gay or something okay. like I I'm like scared I'm gonna like get beaten up because they i'm getting read as a gay man okay. and like i don't yeah it's yeah, like, yeah i don't know it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like still like kind of scary mm-hmm. and, and when did you feel comfortable to talk about that in music um i mean i guess in the last couple of years mm-hmm. or something um yeah, I I wrote a song called Sissy that's yeah. about like this what we're just now we're, we're talking about right now like just like not feeling safe on the streets because of just like people who want to hold I don't know masculinity as like that's what I don't know it, just like men wanting to like show off in front of their mm-hmm. buddies or whatever like let's like pick on this like weaker person or yeah. someone who like appears weak um and i don't know I, it, which is like funny to me cuz i'm just like you care so much about what other men think like mm-hmm. do you not realize like like supposedly you're so like straight and so masculine but you care about what other men think about yeah. you like okay uh <laughs> like turn that so, around turn yeah. that inside out yeah <laughs> and, uh, is it uncomfortable or not performing that in front of people like, we actually so true? Uh, for that particular song, we haven't actually performed it in front of anyone okay. yet because it's a really fast song, and mm-hmm. we just, ha- yeah, we haven't practiced it enough to actually play live mm-hmm. yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, and and going sort of like into the music of with, and I'm going to feel bad, and I'm going to leave this mm-hmm. in. I'm not even going to edit it out. Yeah. Uh, before we recorded, I asked you to say the name correctly, and I just forgot. <laughs> so say it again. Inaco. Inaco. Okay, yeah. good. So Inaco, when did Inaco start? Um it started when I moved to New York uh, about 7 years ago. Mm-hmm. Um we had a different lineup then. Um it was just a trio at that point, okay. but now we're a four piece. So And did you know going in like okay, I want a band that's going to be like this type of music, this type of lyrics, this sound? Um, vaguely, mm-hmm. I kind of, it was sort of, um, like I, I was kind of playing like pop punk mm-hmm. uh, in the Bay Area with this uh, other band called Fleabag. Okay. And um, then that band broke up and we were kind of, we kind of carried some songs uh, from that band into Ina Ko and mm-hmm. started playing those songs as Ina Ko. And so it was kind of just like continuing like that, the like feeling of that band into this, into Ina Ko. Okay. Um, but then, I don't know, like I was growing up and like my tastes were changing mm-hmm. and like, so like our sound has changed a lot since yeah, yeah. the beginning of Ina Ko. Um, and then we got new people in the band and like their style also kind of like shaped mm-hmm. the way we sound, the way we sound now. Were you, you doing most of the vocals? At like, first. Before you had Jade? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And who are the members in the band now currently? Uh, you can shout them out. So Joe ha- is a ri- an original member. Okay. And then Jade joined a few well, maybe it's been five, four or five years or something mm-hmm. now. 
and then Sheena, she's playing drums. She's been playing with us for a couple of years okay. now. And how was that once you had these four members? Like, how did the band change? Um, it felt really good. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I felt, I, I mean, I, yeah, I feel like we have a lot of potential. Um, ex- I don't know. I, now we've been playing in this combination for a while. I, I feel like we have potential, but I want to, like, go beyond that. I want to, like, we, like, see our potential and, like, I don't know, like, do something bigger mm-hmm. with it. Um, but yeah, it, I don't know. We, we get along really yeah. well, like just as people and, um, Joe and I have known Sheena for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, we, we all get along yeah, really yeah. well and like we have similar tastes in music and stuff. Mm-hmm. So. How did things connect with Jay that she was going to be like sharing vocals? Like how did that come about? You were looking for someone to do that? We... Well, first we were just looking for someone to do the second guitar parts that I came up with mm-hmm. for um, the song we had just or album we had just recorded, um, and then she. It, it was kind of like, is she in the band? Is she not in the band? Mm-hmm. But then we eventually were like, yeah, like she's in the band. Like this is your band now, and I I think she asked me. If she, if I was interested in her writing any songs, I was like, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Like, this is your band now. Like, and then she, she like showed us some of her songs, and we were like, yeah, like that's awesome. Uh-huh. And then it kind of just became like, uh, just like floodgates or something. She like started writing more songs, and so so yeah, like with this new album, half the songs are hers, half mm-hmm. of them are mine, and yeah, it, it feels nice to kind of like share the songwriting. Mm. Uh, responsibilities because it sometimes it takes me a while to write songs uh-huh. and yeah I, I, it it's it kind of feels nice too like being on stage to kind of like take a break from <laughs> everyone looking at me uh-huh. <laughs> um, and I can kind of jump around a little more on stage or whatever yeah um, and when did the, the new album the third album but the middle was an ep which i still count right yeah and, uh silent haze like uh when or did silver you start haze. silver haze sorry yeah no. uh silver haze when did you start recording it and all that um, stuff we recorded it last fall mm-hmm. um and the songs some of the songs on there we've been playing for a while some of them we wrote just a few months before recording mm-hmm. them, okay. such as Sissy. So we, yeah, we had we like the first time we ever played some of the songs together. It was just like a few days before actually recording okay. those, those songs. <laughs> um, we, yeah, we, we, because Sheena doesn't live in New York; she lives in Columbus, Ohio. Okay, so we just had I don't know, like maybe three or four days of practicing a bunch before recording Mm -hmm. was like kind of a crazy way to do things but it worked out somehow um yeah (laughs) and are you uh you how was how would you say the difference is between because there you can hear your style definitely changed Mm -hmm. or from the first album to this one yeah but you can like hear it in the ep like with the kind of the direction like how did that come about was that adding Jade is what changed it? Uh, yeah, I think adding Jade, um, the testosterone. Mm-hmm. I think I think I was also just I don't know I I didn't want to write pop punk songs anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I, 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 we still get called a pop punk band, but I don't feel like we are. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I wanted to write songs that kind of matched more with the topics that I was writing about. Mm Kind of just like more like dissonant and like jagged or uh, heavier or something. Yeah. Yeah. And like what you're writing about, is that like reflecting what you're going on in your own life? Yeah. Okay. And do you have to get to a comfort level for that? Like? We're talking about what's going on in your own life and... 
than performing it in front of people? Um, I guess a little bit. Um, I still kind of, I feel like I still kind of cloak the meaning of songs mm-hmm. a little bit with the lyrics. Okay. So people can't really tell what's going on yeah. necessarily. <laughs> um, even though, I, I mean, I'll explain what a song is about usually um, before we play them yeah. on stage. Um, but yeah, it is, I mean, it's kind of scary to like write about something really emotional or, you know, something that's hard to talk about put it in song form, Mm -hmm. record it, and then also perform it in front of people. It's kind of scary, but also feels, I don't know, it feels like the right thing to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Is this uh, the right thing to do? So that's like your politics, a way of being political with the music? Um, Like you kind of, you have to do this. Oh, (laughs) (laughs) um. I do kind of feel like I have to do this. Like, I feel like, um, just, I don't know. Like, there's not really bands who look like us. Mm -hmm. And I I don't know. I just, I want to help put it out there that there are people who look like the, look like us who are also into rock music and, you know, write about heavy things and, I, I guess also part of the reason why I like keep writing songs in this band is, you know, I kind of like I say this all the time, like kind of want to be the band that I wish I had known about when mm-hmm. I was a teenager, like when I was like so hungry for like something like yeah. I like wanted more than what was in front of me. Like one of those things would have been like my band, mm-hmm. like, the band I'm in now, like, um, cause I, yeah, at the time, like I wasn't even thinking like I should look for bands with black girls in them. Like mm-hmm. that wasn't even like, uh, like I n- would never even think that that is a thing that could happen. Yeah, yeah. So, I, you know, it was like bands with like white women in them. Mm-hmm. But now, you know, it's easier to, f- it's a little bit easier to find bands with women of color, black women, trans women, mm-hmm. you know. But at the time, like, it was yeah, like I never saw a black woman playing guitar. Yeah, like, <laughs> never. Like, I never thought that could happen. So, and here you are. Y- yeah, here you are. Here you guys doing it. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, let's see. So, plans. What are, what are you looking forward to the rest of the year? Your um, own music, Einico, which I just said correctly. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> finally. <laughs> so. We're we're not going to be playing shows in the fall, really. Mm -hmm. We're just kind of working on some new songs. Um, I'm playing bass in another band. And I I would like to finish up some of my songs for my solo project. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I don't know. I'm just trying to... I don't know. I feel like I have my like fingers in too many different pies yeah, yeah. So i'm like as i'm saying this like getting kind of overwhelmed with all the <laughs> different projects i'm trying to work on because i'm also trying to work on a movie too okay ah uh, yeah i just like there's like so many different things i want to work on but there's like not enough time in the day mm-hmm. to do all these things <laughs> uh. yeah and uh best place to keep up online with you what the band's um, doing the band Einica. We're, you know, I just want to say it over and over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> practice. Um, we're on we we're on Twitter and Instagram. We don't really post a lot of stuff on Facebook because Facebook I, is tired or what? I just don't really like its like format, but like we try to keep keep up with a, our Twitter and Instagram, yeah. even though we're not playing shows. But okay. I still try to like post pictures and say funny stuff or mm-hmm. whatever on Twitter and. Instagram. So. Okay. So uh, on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Instagram. We have a Tumblr too, but it's, uh, yeah, it's mostly like Twitter and Instagram. Okay. But that's like more active. Okay. I and I will like. put that in the show notes. Yeah. Go. A- anything I leave out? Uh, we covered it. 
good. I think yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Cool. Pretty sussed. Thank you for being so open. And of course. Cool and everything. Yeah. This is wonderful. I enjoy the album's me. great. Thank you. Sure, sure. Thank you. Yeah. Just heard two songs from Inigo's Silver Haze. That was Sissy. And before that, starting it off, Spare Me, 
You definitely should get Silver Haze. It is on Bandcamp, on vinyl. You can go to Ainako.bandcamp.com. Ainako is spelled A-Y-E-N-A-K-O. I am online several places. TalkMusicTalk.com for podcast information. And you can also stream every episode there. I have a personal website, which is thisisboys.com. You can check out my novels and my music. And I love Instagram, so follow me there at thisisboys. Call to action for you if you enjoyed this episode with Mars. A few things. Share it on social media. Maybe email it to a friend. Leave a five-star rating and or comment, especially if you are listening on iTunes. This all helps to grow the TMT audience, and I thank you in advance. Also, there is a TMT app. It is free for iPhone and Android, and you can get it wherever you like to get your apps generally. Or you can subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and a host of other places. Just search for Talk Music Talk. You can also find the podcast on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash this is voice. And once you do one of those things, I have a back catalog suggestion for you going way back in the archive episode number 23 from April 2015, my conversation with Jack Rabbit. He is the editor, publisher of the Big Takeover magazine. It is an indie music magazine that's been around for over 35 years. That's episode number 23 with Jack Rabbit, and I will put that in the show notes for you. Thank you so much for listening to my interview with Mars Dixon. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed Ainiko's music. Till next time, and there will be a next time. This one's for you, Liz. Liz.